Hey, in this video I wanted to show how I made my waterfalls for my game. I use a custom shader material for the waterfall and the shader script is built upon a tutorial from Meets Eats Eats if that is pronounced right and you can find the link for the waterfall file in the description. First I create a plane in Blender and edit it so that it gets the shape of a waterfall. Important is that the plane is subdivided in order to use the vertex movement later. And shades move the mesh so the, that the edges appear soft. Moreover, the UV map of the plane should align with the left and right border because the waterfall texture we are going to use later is only seamless vertically but not horizontally. When this is done, you can export your model to Godot as .obj. In Godot, we open our mesh and create a new shader material. Because the material is used for 3D, we define the shader type as spatial. To get a nice specular later, I like to use Fong. And to be able to see the mesh from the back side as well, we disable culling. Firstly, we need a vector 4 that can contain information of colors. And in our fragment fun function, we can assign that information to our albedo output. For the albedo output, I only need my color channels, therefore I use lightcolor.rpg. For our waterfall, we will need two colors in total. And moreover, the waterfall requires three textures a water texture, a noise texture, and a normal texture. For each texture, we create one sampler 2D variable that can contain one texture. In our fragment function, we assign a vector 2 for displacement to achieve a ripple effect and assign the water texture for it. To control the scale of the displacement, we can add a new variable named displacement mount. For the noise we sample the noise texture and separate the UV to UV.X and UV.Y to be able to stretch the texture later. By using the floor member function the noise gets an altered blending effect. In the next step, we mix the colors with the noise and assign it to a new vector4 variable named col for our albedo output. When attaching the textures to their slot in the shader param, the effect gets visible on my mesh surface. For the noise texture, you can use Godot's open simplex noise. When adding the built-in variable time to the UV of my textures, we receive a motion on our mesh surface. In order to stretch the noise vertically, we need to divide the UV.Y component by 4. By adding the UV with the displacement, causes uh, the ripple effect we want to achieve. Now we will add the normal map and assign the normal map texture to it. Because the normal map is not moving, it is useful to create a new vector 2 named UV movement, which moves the texture only vertically by multiplying it with a vector 2, 0, and 1. The UV itself can then be replaced with our UV movement. For our roughness, I think that 0.1 is a proper value. In order to get rid of the harsh borders on my mesh surface, we assign the water texture to our alpha output. 
Therefore, we only need the alpha channel of my texture. Therefore, I use instead of .rpg.a. Next, we want to add a wave movement to our waterfall. For that, we create three new vector2 variables named strength, frequency, and time factor. In order to make the surface move, we add a new function called height and that gives the surface the wave shapes later. Lastly, in the vertex function, we allocate the height function and we can see our waterfall has a nice wave movement. Lastly, we can tweak the shader param properties in order to get our desired look for our waterfall. That's for this video. Um, thanks for watching and have fun with the shader.